We had called for the uh, opt-out alliance that day of opting out. People saying, I don't want the I don't want the scan, I want the pat down, and really to kind of share with the with really all Americans the um, intrusive nature of this and to bring it to their attention through the media. And when they called it off uh, and um, they shut down the machines and they did not do the pat downs on the very day that they should be doing the most of them to protect Americans, we couldn't help but think, did they do that for a political reason? Did they realize that the media spotlight and the and the awareness of the American people were going to really be on them and what they were doing. And I think, you know, this is one of these procedures, Paul, where, you know, civil liberties ha- has an abstract nature to it. We think about it, freedom of speech, it's, it's so ubiquitous in this country that we take it for granted. But when we see, you know, a grandmother or a nun or a child being essentially groped and fondled and, and um, you know, all but strip searched essentially, um, and we see the demeaning component of it, um, it's uh, it's shocking to us, and it's and and it's kind of a visual symbol of the degeneration of the vitality of the protection of our civil liberties. Um, particularly when it a, a real question arises based upon some studies is how effective this really is in protecting uh, American safety in the skies. So there's a real serious question of whether they whether they did that we filed the FOIA to to force that to force their hand they get back to us and say you know we've got nine pages that really address the very issues you're raising and oh by the way and this is fascinating how bureaucracies work when you said um, do we have information talking about Alex Jones and Prison Planet and Bob Barr and Liberty Guard and Matt Drudge on these four five eight days um, we didn't think you were being specific enough, so we wouldn't even do that search. <laughs> now, I guess I would say when you, when you use a proper noun in someone's name <laughs> and you give them a four or five or eight or ten day range, um, gee whiz, any of us could could figure out how to do that. Um, so I think um, they've they've said we got nine pages on the one topic. Um, um, we of course have to know that they, that on these other topics they have information. They're not disclosing it. And um, and we got back to them in a very vigorous way, and are and are demanding um, to get to the bottom of it. And so we filed kind of a second rebuttal of that FOIA um, to really drill down and make sure that we're getting to the bottom of it. Um, so that's really a, the, the the update, Paul, on the first FOIA. And that's just amazing—the fact that they tacitly admit that they were talking about Alex Jones and Prison Planet with these nine pages relating to your Freedom of Information Act request. We'll be back after the break with Joe C. Hughes of LibertyGuard.org to talk about this and more. Stay tuned. It's the Alex Jones Show live, PrisonPlanet.tv. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show, Friday, February 11, 2011. We're talking to Joe C. Hughes, and President and CEO of Liberty Guard at LibertyGuard.org. And Joe just dropped the proverbial bombshell before the break. Um, it turns out that the TSA does have nine pages of information um, which were created at the height of the TSA backlash uh, at the end of last year which talk about Matt Drudge, Liberty Guard, Bob Barr, Alex Jones, and Prison Planet. Uh, Just as we said all along, the stalling uh, in responding to this FOIA request um, looks like it was exactly that. It was designed to prevent the release of this information. Um, Joe, do you think the TSA will basically be forced to release those nine pages, and what's the uh, timescale on that? Well, that's precisely the the work that that we're doing at Liberty Guard, and I want to um, I want to modify what what I'm hearing you hearing you say as as best I understand it. They have nine pages that specifically regard this possibility of their kind of uh, kind of shutting down or standing down on these issues, and then of course we want to get to the bottom of the political possibility that they did this. Um, really from a, from a political point of view as to a public safety point of view. The, the point regarding Alex Jones, Prison Planet, Matt Drudge, etc., is that they won't even um, do the search because they said there's not enough specific information, which is absurd on the face of it. And we're pursuing that, of course, to force them to disgorge what information they have about 
Alex Jones and, 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 and Matt Drudge vis-a-vis this issue in those dates. And so I think we do really uh, get a, a clear indication from them. They have information. Um, they're not disclosing it. We're in a, in a, in a, in a process of, of forcing them to disclose that. If we get through this administrative phase and it's not satisfactory, then Liberty Guard is prepared to uh, take it to a federal court. That would be our remedy after this process. We not only, Paul, have uh, filed the FOIA on the issue that we've been discussing, but two others, one of them intriguing, the other frightening. Uh, This one, what was called the Screening Partnership Program, which is a, a program where the TSA said to private airports, you know, you can use our TSA, and, and I believe those are union um, screeners, or you can use your own contract screeners, private corporations and companies that would put forward the screeners. And they did a study to see of the effectiveness of the two different groups, and they, and they hired a consulting firm called the Catapult Consulting Firm. They never disclosed the result of that, and, and we're confident that the result of that study is that the private screeners did a superior job to the TSA screeners. But we're forcing them to disclose um, that particular contract. And of course, the taxpayers paid about a half a million dollars to get that study done. That's an interesting one that we're gonna track. But the one I also wanted to mention to you, Paul, is the one um, (laughs) that the Department of Homeland Security, none other than, uh, than Janet Napolitano herself, big sis, is putting in place with, if you can imagine, Their new partner, Walmart, their program called See Something, Say Something. Now imagine this. You're checking out uh, at Walmart, and uh, and in line you have a screen in front of you, and up comes Janet Napolitano who gives you a lecture and a talk on national security and safety and terrorism and and, and tells you, you know, if you see something, you got to say something. And then you go along and buy your Coca-Cola and your beach ball. Um, but you've just, in effect, had an indoctrination um, from the uh, from the TSA and the Department of Homeland Security. We're really challenging that. That's actually in effect at 600 Walmart stores, and we want to Joe, get to the bottom. Joe, stay there. We'll be back after the break. If you can. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. It's Paul Joseph Watson filling in for Alex Jones on this Friday, February 11th edition. And we're talking to Joe C. Hewson, uh, President and CEO of Liberty Guard, uh, who, of course, are leading the fight against Big Sis and the TSA. Now, Joe was just talking before the break about how his uh, group is looking to get more information on this study which found that the the private security that airports had hired um, were more successful than TSA itself which is very interesting given the fact this week that John Pistoli the head of the TSA has moved to block the ability of private airports from replacing the TSA with their own private security of course a massive invasion of the 10th amendment and states rights but Joe after that, you were just mentioning the uh, Walmart telescreens uh, and uh, Big Sis's message to shoppers. Now, what's your investigation into that concluded? Well, again, I, I think if you look at all of these things that we're discussing, uh, it's just a, it's a breathtaking, rapid deterioration of civil liberties. I mean, we're being assailed and assaulted as American people by these procedures. Um, you just mentioned this... Uh, the uh, the private versus uh, public and uh, TSA and this is is this protecting a special interest group in this case the TSA unions is that what's driving this or is it really public safety and this catapult consulting study seems to address that and our suspicion is it, it came out in favor of the private contractors and uh, and I get, perhaps that's not politically expedient for uh, for the TSA but again that comes back to the question of the safety of American people versus political expediency and so that's a shocking revelation to me. And then, and then we move along to Walmart, and now we're into Orwellian country of, you know, people there buying their, their, their Walmart uh, goods and looking up at screens and seeing big sis with a beautific smile, telling them to, uh, if you see something, 
um, say something? Uh, are we now going to be uh, reporting on and tattletales of our neighbors? Are we going to be kind of making stuff up? And uh, um, I mean, we're all in favor of national security. Uh, who wouldn't be? But at the expense of what? And our civil liberties, our freedom, our Constitution? Uh, no, thank you. That's not going to happen. This actually went into effect December of last year. It went into 600 stores. And if you go to the Walmart, has this up on its own website. It says it's it's the first proud national partner with the good folks down at the Department of Homeland Security. Well, if they're the first national partner, first of all, they're a pretty big partner to to get started with. I think every other store is going to really fall in line. And does that mean when we go to the grocery store, we're going to have big sis uh, looking at us and wagging her finger and telling us exactly what we need to do? Um, is this, I mean, how far is this down the road of indoctrination and propaganda? Um, you know, this is surreal to to uh, to Americans. And, uh, and looking at this, this is the this is the kind of thing that we are that we are not accustomed to, and that we feel we really need to stand tall and and get to the bottom of. And that's what Liberty Guard is doing. We filed this FOIA to say, geez, we need to know more about what this is. What kind of deals were struck? Is there any quid pro quo here? I mean, is there anything in this for for Walmart? Um, and if so, we'd certainly like to, to, to know about that. And, and kind of a summary statement that, that I would make to you, Paul, is that we've been actively involved in this at Liberty Guard, and, and really we've followed the TSA and Department of Homeland Security procedures. And we've kind of, as, we, as it were, going through the front door, we've had that front door really kind of slammed in our face. I mean, there's an acknowledgement. We've got nine pages uh, uh, of information about this, and we're just not going to tell you about it. So what we're going to do, just to give you and your, your listeners a bit of a heads up, we have devised a, uh, a, a an additional way that we're going to be pursuing this as we are going to continue to, to, to take the legal remedies, administrative remedies that, that are available to us. We have another program that we're putting into place that uh, is also going to address this. And a specific thing, and we're going to we're going to come on uh, Alex's show next week. On an we'll see you next time, Here Joe. End of the segment. Thanks for your time. Uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Bob Chapman coming up soon. Stay tuned. Baby, baby, baby.